made him write a letter to the police officer, and yet she's going to run this 18-year-old boy who's fully, I mean, on another planet in regard to, you know, mm. night and day compared to this other boy who apparently was raised on Nintendo. And um, and yet they're going to run this one to the mill, but they can't touch him. Mm. So uh, it's interesting to see what's happening here. I mean, you know... Um, um, it's just been my experience. Uh, um, they have to show, they have to prove trust, either through implied or express, or resulting trust. And they try everything in the book to try to get that trust. If they can't, they have to dismiss. Hey, uh, Michael Joseph. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> yes. Hey. Uh, Without sounding too crazy, uh, like uh, I'm being called by the Pope of Rome, uh, on that statement, all you need is two, uh, can I take that to the, uh, or gather together, can I take that to the me, myself, and I, I am uh, my father, I am my mother, and I am myself. There's three gathered together right there. Well, let me just put it to you like this. One man says, I believe in a God, and the other man says, you're crazy. <laughs> See, that's so the problem. Ask, that's the problem. Can I ask you a question? So basically, when they summoned you, if you don't answer that summons, you're you're basically saying, that's not me. That's right. So what? So that's exactly what I've done before. I told, you know, I was thinking, forget it. I'm not going to that. So they issued an order for arrest. What did I do? I turned around and refused it. I refused their initial presentments and sent it back. I said, forget it. I'm not acting for this mess. And that's and, when they uh, camped out in your yard. <laughs> so so then they, they they issued an order. And four months later, excuse me, that was in February when it was refused. And in May, they issued an order for arrest. Well, I refused that and sent it back to the to the chief of police. They issued another one. I refused that and sent it to the chief of police. Now, I mean, you know, this man, Frank, and I, boy, I'm telling you, I can't wait to hear him next week. But, mm. you know, the thing is, is um, part of um, you can't remain silent. If somebody gives you uh, issues something upon you and the presumption is that you are gaining benefit or you are somehow um, in some fiduciary relationship, You've got to do something about it, and if you don't, if you remain silent, then the presumption is you agree to the terms and conditions. So, you know, if they send anything or put anything on any door or anything associated with, you know, whatever, I refuse it. I'm not going to let that sit one minute. And, so, basically, uh, so, so basically, if you're in the courtroom, even arguing anything, any question they ask you, you're already considered since you appeared. To, uh, to you know, because basically you don't have no rights, you know, you're well, accepting. Well, yes and no, and I'll say you got to be careful because there's there's implied trust, there's constructive trust, and there's resulting trust that the judges it can affect, and and so if they're um, if they go to uh, um, you know, you can just. The, there, there are simple ways to tie the thing. There is no silver bullet. You have to just react to, in knowledge, like Frank was saying, to whatever is presented to you. There is no, if you do this, everything's cool. Forget it. That's that's ridiculous. So, you know, for me, I um, I said I don't agree to any of this. So I realizing that the police carry um, military insignia, I wrote the um the JAG office and said, I'm giving you an order from a private assembly to um, abate this matter and call off your dogs. I mean, basically, I didn't say it like that. I mean, it was four pages of uh, here's why, here's the law form, and here's what's going on, and you're you're commanded to – effectively, I laid out exactly the trusts that were, that were presumed, and but the fact of the matter is, is there's a man <laughs> and a woman – who are at, who are being in families and neighborhoods that are being um, libeled, that are being slandered, that are that are being forcefully and unlawfully detained, and right there I've got the four principles: libel, slander, forcible and unlawful detainer. I've got all four, and I said call them off. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is 
I just, you know, come out and, and did everything that I knew to do to say I don't consent. I don't consent to any of all what you're doing. So, you know, it goes right back to this simple principle. If you stand in silence and watch your property sold, then you agree to its being sold. So, you know, I'm not going to get into property. I'm just, you, you understand the principle. If silence <laughs> only leads to two, to two eventualities, and the first is fraud and the second is agreement. Well, it's going to take knowledge and time for the people that have been uh, defrauded from birth, like like uh, Frank Collins was talking about the birth certificate. Basically, we're that dead trust on that paper already signed to them from our parents. So it's like we we break it because the thing is fraud. Because basically that trust that they're saying, they're making themselves a trustee and the beneficiary, yeah. which breaks the trust, right? Maybe. Uh, it, it's not fraud if you use it. It's not fraud if you start using the, the trust name with the Social Security number. You're the one using it, and you say, well, I did so in my ignorance. Well, that's too bad. You should have been. Why are you ignorant? Yeah, but basically is there, 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 have, there is a way by basically obviously figuring out the scam and then just don't operate it there anymore right. and don't use it. Now we got an intelligent. Yes, that's exactly right. Once you figure it out, just like once they left um, Egypt, and they got to the, the to the place of bitter waters. Then they turned back on Moses and said, "How come you brought us out here in the wilderness to kill us? At least there we had good garlic and you know onions and good stuff to eat." So they had, they had gotten their freedom, but as soon as they got it and it came upon strife, they couldn't wait to get back, and they were willing to go back and be slaves just so they could eat well. And so you know, if you if you are one who is fortunate enough to gain your freedom, keep it. You know, um, you know the scripture says that um, Zechariah two seven um, deliver thyself, O Zion that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. And you know, as as uh, Frank was talking tonight, you know Revelation eighteen, which is playing over and over in my head like a soundtrack. You know, I mean, don't you see that um, the kings of the earth have gotten extremely rich off of the. Uh, the principles of what this Pope, is, of what this uh, Vatican has, has has put in place. Oh yes, yeah. so they've taken control of every aspect you can try to construct in your own mind. Right. So today, if you were to create, you know, look at the look at the Pope down there. He's got himself a. Um, first of all, he wears the the uh, the fish cap. Uh, Dagon, Dagon, I think as it is. And then um, notice he also wears the yarmulke. Right. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? You know. And by Basically, the way, that that has to do with Freemasonry a little bit, but I won't I won't go any further than that. Um, it basically, but, boils down to us us helping one another and casting away those types. Uh, you know that type of uh, uh, of way of life. I mean. They, Regardless of what it says, don't put yourself in those situations where you're even to be charged at all. Just help the fellow man when they're you know, they're in need, and um, live and let live. Be that living trust, basically. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that uh, you know the scripture is true, and it says in those days ten men will grab a hold of the skirt of one Yehuda, and they'll say, "We see Elohim is with you. Come." You know, uh, won't you teach us, you know? Um, so, personally, you know, I, I see a, um, I know it may sound strange, but uh, I see a lot of people now um, returning back to the true law. There's a lot of people that don't really care one way or hill of beans about it at all, but I see a lot of people that are, um, you know, trying to, uh, they realize that that building on the corner is not the church, you know. And that's just that's just a bunch of uh, bricks and, and uh, sticks. That's all that is. And, uh, and most of those buildings are sitting there at the behest of Rome anyway, right? And what's new under the sun? All the, <laughs> the Sanhedrin 
um, in the time of Yeshua, those boys were all there at the behest of Rome. Not one of those were anointed priests of uh, Yah. I do have to say that, that what I'm going to be doing for everybody, since this is for everybody and it has to be free, no ownership, um, I want this, I'm, I'm in the process of setting up a system where people can post content, like sort of in their own profile, and, uh, you know, the, you know, the main topics and everything that everybody wants to focus on, we're gonna, we're gonna push it there, but it's all gonna be there where everybody can grab everybody's content. I don't know oh. if that sounds great to you guys. JD, there's a place on the internet that you might be interested in going to. It's called Team Lab, T E A M L A B, and um, it's a real, it's a project manager style web page, but it's it's really amazing. You can build uh, communities there. Is it open source? It's open source. Yes, it's a freebie. Oh, that's amazing. That's it, this is nothing better than being free. I mean, that goes anything even in in that as, as you speak it out. I mean it. It just it, – it's the best. I mean, it's not controlled. Yeah, so you can literally set up um, projects. You can set up teams. You can set up communities. And um, it, it's basically a project manager's um, um, nifty little tool that they set up on the Internet. But it, it can get it can get huge, and it's very robust right there on the Internet. Can I shape my uh, my front end? And that's basically just the back end, right? Go check it out. I, I think you can. I think you can. Um, you can set up a portal in terms of how people access it, and um, and then you can set up communities, and people can come come in and uh, and and become members of those communities. And then you can communicate. You can set up um, groups, and you can communicate within certain groups, or you can uh, um, you can you can blast. Um, broadcast if you will to to the entire group yeah I, I don't i i want to get to the point where you know it just emphasizes this direct uh thing because i mean it, i you know you could put things out there where where you know it, uh, just all these other ideas and other networks grow with other hogwash stuff too but you know, I like keeping these calls with the, with the, with these callers. They're very uh, intelligent human beings, and uh, you know, getting the point across, the true point of of you know, stop being stupid, stop being the ward, uh, you know, of the state. Well, you know, here's this is interesting because you know, one thing that you can do to really um, really frustrate. See, timing's everything. Timing is absolute everything, and one thing you can do to frustrate. If we're talking about law, then what we're talking about is making an argument before a judge. And if you already know the argument that's going to be used against you, well, you know, you have the like you know like somebody says somebody says well, we we now make a motion to appoint a court appointed attorney, and then the the so-called man who's standing in the so-called office of defendant says, look, I know exactly what you're doing. You're trying to make me a ward of the state to which I've become incompetent and I can't speak for myself. But clearly I'm competent because I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> basically, you're basically telling them I know your game, you know, I see your cards. Yeah, so how can you say I'm incompetent now because I clearly told you exactly what you were up to. Now, well, we got a big problem. Now this is when they like to get up and leave, and you'll see all these uh, these nut jobs saying the judge surrendered his court. Absolutely not. He's changing. He's with honor changing the law form, and he's gonna he's gonna go from juristic persons into admiralty. And if you don't understand what's going on at admiralty, there you're gonna have some headaches. Is, I, I have a question for you. Is that where? When you first go in and you're looking for a remedy, but then when he comes back in Admiralty, you have cure and maintenance because you're not dead salvage. You're a living, breathing spirit being with blood yes, flowing you, in your veins. When you get um, when you ask for maintenance, you're, um, what you're saying is, is I'm a sailor on the ship here, and mm -hmm. I, and, uh, you know, if you're if you're if you're going to go to Admiralty, then we're at sea, and then therefore you must be claiming to be captain of this vessel. And therefore, um, if we're going to go to captain's master or effectively, um, this is where it gets kind of tricky. 
because um, they can really quickly go over to the UCMJ and um, 